An adult human has about 206 bones and a baby has about 300. Either way, these bones provide us with amazing protection and movement. And as an artist, it's great to know the bones in the body so that when you draw people, it becomes a bit easier. I will show you how to draw the basic bones in the human body in this tutorial, so let's get straight to it. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a line down the centre of my page. I'm not going to press hard because this is only a guideline. I'm then going to mark the top of where my skull will be. And I'm now going to work out how big the skull needs to be. A human skull generally fits into a human body about 7 to 7.8 times. So let's have a little look if I was to do the skull about this big. I'm going to use my fingers to measure it and check. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a little bit big. Let's do a tiny bit smaller. And that should be about right. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should work. So my skull is going to be from this line to this line. I'm now going to zoom in so that you can see me closer up drawing the skull. To start the skull, you're going to begin at the top of the line and you're going to curve round a bit like a sort of bowl on both sides. Try and keep it symmetrical as you can. Then from the bottom of each side of the bowl, you're going to curve from in, you're going to come out for some cheekbones that come down and in. Again on the other side, you come from the inside, out, down and in. Again, adjust so that they look as similar as possible. Next, we're going to come curve up a little bit and then down. Same with this, curve up a bit and then down and round to join in the middle. This will be the top jaw. Go under the cheekbone to here, on either side. You're going to come out and curve down for the bottom jaw. Let's take off that extra line there. And the same on the other side. I'm going to curve down a bit and in for the bottom jaw. We're now going to do the bottom teeth. So from this, these two sides, Come down, curve round, and back up. And <clears throat> you can then draw a line from the middle of this, and you can show the teeth with little lines going along. Like that. We're going to do the eye sockets. So firstly, from the top of the cheekbones, just curve round and up a bit. And inside that space, we're going to do the sort of large eye sockets of the skull. They're sort of roundish, squarish shapes like a square but the corners are curved. And then the nose cavity comes below and it's a sort of triangle like that. These are the bones where the eyebrows are so you can indicate those like this. 
Uh, there's a little section in there that meets and joins. And the little dents in the skull above the jaw. And also little dents below the eyes. So there we have a simple skull representation. The next is the beginning of the vertebrae, the neck vertebrae, so the bones in the neck. And you don't want to start in the middle, you want to go either side. And we're going to do about four bones. So you curve round and join. Curve round, either side, join. Curve round, join, and again. From the neck bones, we're going to draw two more bones that come out wide. These are called the clavicles. You can feel them on the top, just by just under your neck where your neck meets your body. So they come out and over. They're quite thin. One there and one on the other side. Try and get them as long as each other rather than one being much longer than the other, which I've done. Make that a little shorter. So we have our clavicles and then we want to get this largest bone that's down the middle of the chest called the sternum. It's from which the ribs come off. I'm going to draw it like that and then let's get those ribs curling off of the sternum. So the first rib is quite small, doesn't come out much and it goes behind the clavicle like this. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Here's our first rib. And then let's get the second rib, which is sort of kind of coming underneath that. Still behind a bit. And we've got a few more ribs to go. You can see I'm sort of curving them round like this. And they say that some people have more ribs than others and some people have less. It's not always exactly the same how many every human being has. It's quite interesting. And you can see that they get a bit wider as they go down. They can come out further. And of course we know that they house the lungs, so they're very useful in keeping the lungs just soft, keeping them sort of safe protecting them, but allowing the lungs to move in and out so that we can breathe. It's very clever, cleverly designed. We need to do a few more coming out from here. going to do about 12 of them, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. Maybe I'll do one in this gap. 10. 
10 and then underneath there's sometimes a couple of ribs that aren't attached but are still there for protection so you can do those like that and then you need to do it on the other side as well once you've done the ribs on the other side we then need to show the kind of end of the sternum and continue the vertebrae or the backbones that continue to come down in between and support the spine. Once you make them, once you get below, just below the ribs, we can then um, get the pelvis in, but we need to get further down before we do the pelvis. So the pelvis are two large bones and they kind of come up and round on both sides. And then we're going to go back up to finish off where the clavicles meet the shoulders. So there's a shoulder blade that comes behind the ribs and then the joint bone that helps the arms to be attached. And now we can get the arm, the upper arm bone in. So we have the joint there and the bone tends to be wider at the top and then it kind of comes thinner and then wider at the bottom. Then the lower arm has two bones, one on this side And another one on this side and there's a kind of gap in between them both like this then we have lots of small bones in the wrists which allow our wrists to move and finally we have our finger bones four there and of course our thumb coming out and each finger bone has little bones in them because we know we've got muscle we've got knuckles where our fingers bend so we have to have bones that can bend so you need to draw sections like this And of course you do the same thing on the other side. Let's label a few of the bones we've got so far. So we know that we have the ribs and the whole thing is called the rib cage. We have our spinal cord all the bones down the vertebrae, spinal cord, and we know that one bone in the spinal cord is called a vertebra. Vertebra. We had this long bone that came out just under the neck called 
the clavicle. And we had this protective sort of wider bone on the chest called the sternum. And that's the bone from which all the ribs come out. We've got the upper arm bone, which is called the humerus. I suppose that's the bit that you link when you hit your funny bone. So I wonder if there's a link between the word humerus and the funny bone. Although it isn't very funny when you hit your funny bone. Then we have two bones here. We have the radius. And the ulna. The ulna is the one that stays stable. And the radius is the one attached to the thumb that move, can move about. So this is the ulna. And the one attached to the thumb is the radius. And that's the one that moves about when you twist your arm. And we know that we've already put in the pelvis, so we can go ahead and label that here, pelvis. And now we've got the rest, the bottom half of the skeleton to complete. In the middle of the pelvis, there's a hole, an oval hole. And through that hole, we can see the very bottom of the spinal cord. It looks a bit like two wiggly V, V lines, like the letter V. With an oval at the base. And underneath that, we need to draw the bottom part of the pelvis. So, if you were to draw a sort of wiggly line going across and from beneath that, as if this is coming behind, we're going to come round and round and then we're going to double that up, round and round. We need to draw the ball and socket joint that joins our top leg bone to the pelvis. So I'm doing a curved line either side. And from that sort of little ball shape, we need to come out to create another ball shape. Again, out, another ball shape. This is going to curve round and down, and then we're going to have our bone. Again on this side, round and down, and here, round and down. So we have our bone. And this bone is going to come slightly inwards. It's a very long bone in our body. So we're going to come down. Remember, bones go slightly thinner in the middle, and they get wider around the joint and we're going to do this bit as if it's grabbing hold almost a bit like a hand grabbing hold of something like that and on the other side and down get slightly thinner and out and then that sort of handy looking bit and we're going to do the kneecap now or patella so you're going to get that in like this, two sort of circles, not too big, like this. And then the lower leg, a bit like the lower arm, also has two bones. A larger one that supports the kneecap, so you're going to 
curve round on the other side like this. Come down, get thinner. And then, as always, fatter at the bottom and curve round. We'll do the same thing on this side. Get the support for the kneecap. Come in a bit, get thinner. And fatter again at the bottom. <coughs> Now we'll do the other bone in the leg and there's a little gap between them so let's draw the gap first and now for the bone a little bit fatter at the top and it does get quite thin and it comes down to the ankle and same on the other side Finally, we have the little bones in our ankle, much the same as in our hand, in that they allow for lots of movement. And then the segmented bones that lead into our toes. They're slightly wider, all of them at the top. And then they get gradually smaller and smaller. And the same on the other side. These I'm not drawing too carefully because it's more a sort of diagram just to understand what's going on with the bones and to know what is there. So that we have a good idea of what's happening underneath all of our muscles and skin. So we can get our labels now for the second, the bottom half of the body. We have um, the femur, very large bone in our body. We have the patella, which is the kneecap, patella. We have the two bones in the lower leg, the larger one is the tibia. Tibia and the smaller one is the fibula. Fibula. We have tarsals, which are the small bones down by the ankle. Tarsals. Tarsals. We have, I like this word, phalanges. Phalanges are the feet bones and it begins with a PH. Phalanges. And this, the ankle bones are the tarsals and the hand bones are the carpals. Carpals. And we had phalanges here, and we also have phalanges here, our hand bones. So that's easier to remember. Phalan phalanges. So I've added a couple of labels that you might want to add as well. The backbone is the scapula. The V shape peeping through this oval hole is the sacrum and the coccyx. Otherwise, 
This gives you an idea of the basic and main bones that are in our body. Of course, there are teeny tiny ones like the tiniest bones in our ears that I can't really draw on here, but it gives you a good idea generally of the main bones that construct the human skeleton. I hope you love this tutorial. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and check out my other artwork on Instagram and Facebook at Nash Henkel Art.